everyone. Welcome to today's BioForum presentation entitled Interactive E-Learning Tools, Enhancing Hybrid and Online Training. Our BioForum webinar is scheduled to run from 10 a.m. until about 11 a.m. Eastern Time. My name is Dan McClellan. I'm the e-learning coordinator for the BioNetwork BioEd Center located at Gaston College. And with me today is Rick Raymer. Rick, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Rick. Rick is our gaming and simulation coordinator with the BioEd Center, and he's housed at the BTEC campus in Raleigh. Now, if any time during today's presentation you have a question, please feel free to type it in the chat box located on the right side of the screen. And when you submit those questions, please send them to all participants. And Rick and I will do our best to answer all of your questions. From time to time during our meeting, you may be asked to provide some feedback by answering poll questions. So when prompted, the poll questions will appear on the right side of your screen. Select your answer and click Submit. Let's go ahead and try it. I have loaded a poll, and you should see it on the right side of your screen. And if you haven't done so already, please fill that out. We'd like to know who we have in our meeting today. So please select the option that best describes you. And also, to help us out so that we have an accurate record of your participation, let us know if you're sharing a screen. Type the total number of participants at your location for question two. Now, if you're the only person viewing at your screen, just type the number one. Now, while you're doing that, I encourage you to mark your calendars for our February Bioforum entitled The Relationship Between Honey Bee Health and Pollination in Agroecosystems. More information and registration is available online at ncbionetwork.org. Thank you. We're excited to have all of you meeting with us, so let's go ahead and get started. But just before we do, please click the two links on the screen. You should see two URLs. If you click on these links, they will open a new browser window. Follow the instructions if you need to download or install a, plug, a plug-in, but otherwise just minimize both of those windows. We'll talk about those in a little bit and return to this main WebEx screen. So I'll give you just a moment to go ahead and open up those two windows and then come back to the main WebEx screen. All right, very good. And if you didn't get those URLs, Rick, would you mind dropping those into the uh, chat box for me? Yeah, no problem. All right, so here are the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to move fairly quickly this morning so that uh, we can uh, get you out on time. But uh, we're going to talk about the background and benefits of interactive e-learning tools, what they are and how they can help you. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our design approach. And then we're going to look at two examples. One is Active Prime HPLC, and the other is a centrifugation e-learning tool. And those are the, uh, the windows that you just opened up. But uh, we're going to wrap up the conversation by looking at some of the coming attractions, some project ideas for this year and next, and then we'll talk about any of the questions that you may have. So we'll start by, uh, I guess, defining interactive e-learning tools. Here's how we define them. They're reusable chunks of training that can be used across many different settings or courses. Now, this diagram on the right illustrates our deployment strategy for interactive e-learning tools. These objects can live in many different courses, both for community college curriculum and continuing ed courses, as well as industry training. And in some cases, depending on the subject matter, these e-learning tools are even used in middle and high schools as well. The focus or the key here is accessibility to learners. We want uh, learners to be able to access these e-learning tools uh, and be able to repeat them as many times as necessary. They are self-paced and highly interactive. So what is the role of interactive e-learning tools in education? Can we design virtual training products that are so realistic and helpful to learners that we can completely replace hands-on training? Rick, do you know the answer to this one? Um, I don't know, Dan. I I'm going to guess that, no, it can't be a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, man. You're paying attention. The answer is no, and this is not BioNetwork's educational philosophy. Rather, our philosophy is that interactive e-learning tools are best used as tools which complement and enhance hands-on training that's found in the community college system. So this diagram uh, illustrates the context in which e-learning tools are most effective. The student or trainee reads about a topic in a textbook or a lab manual. 
Second, he or she applies the reading assignment by completing one of these interactive e-learning tools. And then the student and trainee uh, or trainee is able to replay that as many times as they need to. And finally, the student or the trainee arrives to the laboratory ready to perform the exercise. Now, often we'll add an additional step to the instructional design, a video demonstration. And this enables the learner to have multiple exposures to the material before even gowning up to the laboratory. Now, BioNetwork's interactive e-learning tools provide a printable or savable personalized certificate of completion. So if you, as an instructor, want to use one of these tools as a graded assignment in your class, you can require that students submit this certificate to you for the grade. So why use these tools? Well, our goal is to transition as much material from this right side of the column over here to the left. And the result is that we maximize our students' hands-on time in the laboratory. So these are the types of activities that we can easily accommodate online. And then that leaves us with these activities for on campus. And the results is that students enter your hands-on training lab better prepared, and we spend less time in a face-to-face -face setting reviewing essential and basic concepts. Now we surveyed some first semester biotechnology students to find out how they felt about interactive e-learning tools, and the majority of respondents cited an increase in confidence about performing a similar task in a real laboratory. And we feel like an increase of confidence is going to translate into improved performance in the lab. Now we're going to uh, give you guys a, try, a turn to uh, try your hand at one of these interactive e-learning tools, and we'll turn it over to Rick. All right, thanks, Dan. Okay, so this, uh, this interactive e-learning tool is uh, for a GE Active Prime Plus unit. Uh, we made this tool uh, for the Capstone Center in Raleigh, which is one of seven centers in the bio network. Um, and they offer a course on high-performance liquid chromatography. And to support the classroom work that, te that teaches the concepts and the processes of chromatography, students participate in lab work using this GE Active Prime Plus unit. Um, Prior to the development of the e-learning tool that we'll be demonstrating today, students were familiarized with chromatography equipment by showing them a poster of a labeled unit, breaking into small teams, and then asking them to identify parts on the actual hardware. Uh, in this small group activity, numbers are placed on the key components of the Active Prime Plus unit, and students use a lettered list of part names, matching them to the, part, uh, to the numbered parts. Next, students must place the list of part names in the correct order to indicate the flow of material through the unit. Uh, this process typically takes about 45 minutes, and in one session that I attended, none of the small, none of the small groups completed the exercise. Uh, in an effort to enhance this identification process so students uh, can get more hands-on time with the equipment in the lab, We've produced an interactive e-learning tool meant to introduce students to the equipment prior to attending the class. This tool is only meant to familiarize students with part identification and flow path, and it wasn't produced to cover chromatography concepts and processes. With this particular interactive tool, classroom and lab activity won't be changed. Rather, the intent is to cut down the time that is spent in the lab on part identification so that students can begin operating the equipment sooner. So we're now going to give you some time to try out the interactive tool on your own. After you've spent some time going through the Active Prime Part ID tool, please take a few moments to complete the survey that's going to appear in the right pane, and we'll resume our presentation in about five minutes. If you have any questions during this time, please type them in the chat field. OK, Rick, it looks like most folks have uh, at least worked through enough of this interactive e-learning tool to get a feel for it and are uh, nearly completed uh, filling out the poll and we appreciate your uh, participation in this. So I think Rick we're ready to uh, take a look at the next the uh, next example. Okay, wonderful. And it, you know, it, again if you have any questions or even if you wanted to make a comment, uh feel free, uh, feel free to put those in the chat box. Uh and uh we can address those as we go along here. Um, so this next, um, this next interactive e-learning tool that we're going to show you here is a, um, it, it covers uh, centrifugation. And unlike the Active Prime Part ID tool, this interactive e-learning tool covers the concepts and processes of centrifugation. In addition, the testing of student knowledge is actually done within the learning object 
rather than in the classroom or lab environment. Um, so there is a quizzing element that you'll see in this. Uh, from a presentation standpoint, this e-learning tool is very different from the Active Prime product. This is a 2D presentation. That is, uh, this is constructed using flat artwork as opposed to a 3D presentation. Uh, we also use a virtual coach in this product that guides you through the concepts and operation of a centrifuge. Uh, research has shown that when presenting learning concepts in e-learning material, students learn better when they perceive that the material is directed at them from a coach or a mentor. You may also notice that the presentation reinforces sound laboratory practices such as the use of a lab notebook and lab manuals. As you work through the exercise, you'll be prompted to record your observations in the lab manual, or I'm sorry, in the lab notebook. After completing the virtual lab work, you will be quizzed on your knowledge of the concepts and processes of centrifugation. After completing the quiz, as Dan, as Dan had pointed out earlier, you will be prompted to print out a certificate of completion. You don't need to do that today. Uh, in a classroom scenario, students would be asked to complete the interactive e-learning tool before coming to the lab and to print out the certificate for presentation to the instructor. Again, our desire, our desire here is to enhance classroom and laboratory work. By giving students a base of knowledge before coming into the class or the lab, ultimately allowing students to have more hands-on time. We will now give you some time to try out the interactive tool on your own. After you've spent some time going through the centrifugation learning object, please take a few moments to complete the survey in the right pane, and we'll resume our presentation in about 10 minutes. If you have any questions, please type them in the, in the chat field. Thanks. All right, it's been about uh, 10 minutes, and uh, we appreciate you uh, working through the Centrifugation Interactive e-learning tool and providing some feedback in the poll that is now on the right side of your screen. It's quite okay if you weren't able to complete the uh, the IET. In fact, um, we estimate, and, and most of our uh, testers it show that it takes 15 to 20 minutes to complete uh, an interactive e-learning tool such as this, so uh, we, uh, we shortchanged you a few minutes so uh, don't feel bad at all if uh, you weren't able to get through. Now, the good thing is these things are always available online. You can, you can do it at any time by following that URL. We wanted to share with you some of the other interactive e-learning tools that are now available from BioNetwork. Uh, and here are some screenshots of some examples, uh, pH meter calibration, spectrophotometry, the glassware accuracy, measuring weights are excellent examples of, of tools that would be appropriate for any uh, biotech or chemistry lab course. And then the environmental monitoring is a, a game that uh, is uh, caters more towards the industry training uh, for uh, working in a clean room. Some other examples, the centrifugation that you just looked at, uh, we also have one for lyophilization, chromatography, and for sterile gowning procedures. Lab safety is, uh, of course, relevant for any chemistry, biotech, or biology lab. Fermentation and filtration. Now, the Sherlock Homework Mysteries is uh, a little bit different. It's a series of five games that teach uh, the basic principles uh, of foundational math concepts, such as order of operations, integers, basic algebra, decimals, and fractions. And these games are available online at SherlockHomework.com. BioNetwork also has a series of short course modules that are uh, available for clinical research and validation. And Rick, do you want to mention uh, Future Factory? This is an exciting project that, uh, that you managed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Future Factory is a product that was funded through a grant from Duke Energy Foundation to attract middle school and high school students to careers in manufacturing. Um, and the perception of manufacturing jobs is that, the, that these are low-paying, low-tech positions that take place in dirty, unsafe environments. And really, the truth is that today's manufacturing processes require a highly skilled workforce. And as we move into the future, these factory jobs will require workers with higher and higher degrees of technical skills. And these are skills that can be gained at community colleges. Uh, to reach these students, we've designed a game that will hopefully plant a seed in their minds that will sprout when they are considering their career plans after graduation. Uh, to do this, our primary goal is to engage them as long as possible. Uh, to, so to further that, to, uh, to lengthen that engagement, 
Um, we've designed Future Factory first and foremost to be a fun game. And uh, this year, uh, well, I should really say at the end of last year, BioNetwork was honored to have three of our products nominated for awards at the 2010 DevLearn Conference in their demo fest. And one of these three nominations, that is Future Factory, was awarded a Best in Category Award for Hardware Simulation. And this is quite an honor for BioNetwork uh, to be recognized by the international e-learning community. Um, this game, uh, as noted on the screen, is available for a free download for PCs and Macs at futurefactorygame.com, and we'll soon have it available also on the, um, for the iPad, uh, available for download through the App Store. Thanks, Rick. And there was a question on the chat box that uh, I missed. It's from Donna, and the question is, is, in some of our more rural areas, students have dial-up connections. How do these work with such a slow connection? And that's an excellent question, and that's something that we have to consider um, in the design as well as the development phases of, of these types of projects. What we've tried to do, and, and Rick may be able to, uh, to speak to this as well, we've tried to uh, accommodate, um, well, we tried to find that, that nice balance between the, uh, the, the high-quality graphics and performance as well, you know, coupled that with uh, accessibility for folks who have a slow internet connection. Uh, and the majority of these products will take some time to load at the beginning uh, if you have a slow connection, but once those have uh, have completely loaded, you'll be able to, to play them or work through them uh, without any trouble whatsoever. Uh, Rick, anything else to add to that? No, I think that you covered it. It really is a balancing act that we, uh, you know, it, with every project we we try to uh, to make them accessible to a wide variety of different connection speeds. And as you pointed out, Dan, that once, the, once they have downloaded them for the first time, uh, they will load up pretty quickly. Uh, the other option that we have is that um, we can always make arrangements to have these put on, um, you know, on CDs or other media for distribution in that way. Uh, so, um, you know, these could also be used as standalone products. We can make arrangements to work with you to do that. Yeah, that is an option. Um, and and I guess the the you know if if there's a situation that warrants that that uh, deployment strategy, we'd certainly be in favor of doing that. It, it's helpful for version control to use the uh, the ones that are live online because we do make updates and improvements uh, to all of these products. And you, so you can always access the uh, the most recent version online. Now here are some of the coming attractions. Uh, these uh, are topics that were identified through our needs analysis over the last few months. We talked with faculty, we talked with uh, industry trainers, and um, these were all topics that were identified as priorities for this year. Um, and there's a variety of topics, not just in life science, uh, but some um, some other categories as well, uh, making a product according to CGMP, metric conversions. Um, we get a, a lot of requests for material on metric conversions. Safety training and PPE, and this is more in the realm of uh, in the advanced manufacturing industry. Uh, we're going to be expanding the Sherlock homework mysteries. I mentioned earlier that uh, we have a series of those math games. Um, well, we like the brand and we like the idea of the uh, Sherlock Homer character, so we're expanding that dramatically to uh, engage students in foundational science concepts. It will be a completely different game style, different game graphics, and we are in pre-production on that right now. Viticulture, aseptic technique, autoclave operation, beekeeping, GC, HPLC, and sterile fill finish. So these are the coming attractions, the products that are currently in pre-production with BioNetwork, and the majority of these will be available um, come June of this year. Uh, a couple of them, the Sherlock Homework Mysteries and Beekeeping, have a, a little bit longer uh, development timeline. Each project that we undertake requires a team, uh, and that team consists of subject matter experts, designers, developers, and sponsors. Um, and so that's, uh, I think that that is a, a huge key for making a successful product, is having the right folks on board and as part of that team. Uh, some of the examples that you looked at today, we worked with subject matter experts from these colleges. Uh, but we're always looking for folks who are interested in helping us 
um, as either a subject matter expert or quality tester um, or just a team member in some role or another. So um, in just a second, I'm going to open a poll. And in fact, uh, it's open now on the right side of your screen. We'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you on the coming attractions, which of these products you are uh, you think would be the most helpful to you. And then also if you are interested in serving on a project team, we'd love to talk with you in a little bit greater detail on how we might make that work. So I'll give you a few moments to uh, answer that poll that's on the right side of the screen. While you're doing that, uh, there's a really easy way to find all of these interactive e-learning tools. You can go to two destinations. One is ncbionetwork.org slash IET for interactive e-learning tools. You have a list of all of our inter interactive e-learning tools right there. And you can also use the North Carolina Learning Object Repository. So either of these destinations will, uh, will uh, guide you to the, uh, these e-learning tools. The products that are currently in pre-production, well, when they are finished this summer, you can also find those at these same links. That is all that uh, we have uh, prepared to uh, to talk about today. Uh, we certainly have plenty of time for questions. If there are other questions, please type those in the chat box. Rick, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to mention? Uh, no, I just uh, wanted to uh, reiterate just how um, grateful we are that everybody attended today. We're really excited about the products that we're making for 2011, and we really appreciate everybody's support. And again, to reiterate, I'm, I'm trying to scan back through the chat box to see if we missed any questions. Uh, there was a question about will these topics be available as free interactive e-learning tools. Uh, yeah, you can find out everything you need to know by looking at ncbionetwork.org slash IET or from the North Carolina Learning Object Repository. I think one of the things that, that perhaps separates um, BioNetwork's e-learning products from some others is that um, it's kind of our philosophy to err on the side of access. We want students to be able to have access to these materials at all times. And so uh, locking them behind password protective firewalls, uh, all of those things represent hurdles or speed bumps that are going to slow down a student's access to this material. So we really want to, uh, to make these easily accessible for students and instructors. Yeah, and along those same lines, uh, we are exploring um, different distribution methods. And so we are uh, doing some development on the iPad and we're, we're also going to be exploring uh, other mo mobile platforms, so iPhones, uh, Android phones, and other mobile platforms. Uh, there's a question here that says, what feedback do you get from these products from visitors on the mobile launch pad? Rick, do you want to take that one? Uh, well. Um, Lisa Richmond would, uh, you know, you can contact Lisa Richmond and she um, would be uh, willing to give you some firsthand uh, um, information on that. Uh, I think generally we have gotten uh, good feedback on these products uh, and, um, uh, you know, we are working with Lisa uh, to improve our products. We have found that the uh, time that students spend on the mobile launch pad can be very limited, and so we have to gear our products towards short presentations. Um, so we're having to go back and modify some of our products so that uh, students get these kind of bite-sized chunks uh, of information, you know, in, in two to five minutes uh, at the most, and interest them enough so that when they go home, they want, uh, they are compelled enough to, uh, to go home and to download these on their own and to explore them a little bit further. So that's one of the things that we have found out is that we really have to tailor these products uh, specifically towards that short period that those that those students are on uh, our mobile launch pad. Yeah, and if you're not sure what we're talking about, the uh, mobile launch pad is a bus that uh, goes around to uh, uh, job and career fairs and visits with middle school and high schools and with community groups to uh, to share with them career opportunities in uh, STEM critical careers, and so a lot of the products that uh, that we work on are also available 
for for folks to play on the bus. So there is a, there's a, a great deal of crossover there. Uh, there was one other comment here. It says, agree on the access. I've seen too many uh, objects that are accessible at one time. You go back, it's password protected. <laughs> yeah, I've seen those examples as well. Um, and uh, and so that's that's one thing. You know, again, we err on the side of access. These these materials, these links are going to uh, uh, to be consistent for you uh, as we make improvements and version updates. Um, the same URL. Will uh, will still be relevant, and that's one other thing. Uh, I get questions uh, sometimes from folks, uh, from instructors that want to know how to add these to their course. Is there any strange programming that's involved to to make it work with Moodle or with Blackboard? And we have uh, we've tried to make it as simple as possible. So just add an external link in your course, and you're good to go. Any other questions? I'll hang around the. Uh, the, the WebEx room for a few moments. If uh, if you have some other questions, please feel free to type those in. Um, I have loaded a poll in the right side of the screen. This is the very last poll we're going to make you fill out. Uh, but we'd like to get some feedback on our presentation today and also some suggestions for topics for future Bioforum events. While you're doing that, please note that today's presentation was recorded so you can view it again you will receive a thank you email from BioNetwork that will include a web link to the recording. You can find out about this and other Bioform events by visiting our website, ncbionetwork.org. And go ahead and mark your calendar for our February Bioform. Registration for this event is free and available online at ncbionetwork.org. I'd like to thank the North Carolina BioNetwork for making this presentation possible, and thanks also to you for your time and participation. This concludes our webinar, and on behalf of BioNetwork, thank you, and have a great day.